Tonight is June the 30th, 2015, and uh, this is my kickoff to a very exotic project. It's going to be an 833 single ended triode amp. I have always heard how marvelous they are. Never built one. I thought about building with different triodes. Got a lot of different triodes up in the attic. I'll show you some of them. But uh, I'm going to go all out and make it the 833. That's a radio transmitting tube and an audio tube. In the old AM stations, they would use one or two of these in the output and one or two to modulate it. Here's the filament transformer for it. These things take 10 volts at 10 amps to light it up. I'm going to use a 12.6 uh, volt 10 amp, so I've got plenty of current, because I'm going to rectify it. You, gotta, you need to put DC on the uh, filament or it'll hum. Here's some plate uh, connectors, or high voltage connectors rather, that will go into the chassis. This is the output transformer. I have two of these beauties. I used the other one in this that crazy amplifier I built running a pair of three 400 Z's at 3000 volts on the plate. Actually, I'm gonna be running about 2500 volts on the plate of this one. This is a driver transformer that'll drive this. I haven't decided yet whether to use a KT88 and a 6DJ8. That's, that, that's a popular one I've seen out there, which is maybe what I use. And the power supply, I'm going to do it like this. Well, let me show you the power supply over here a little bit. I know these are 811s, but I'm using them just to stage it because these are bad. I save old tubes sometimes just for this purpose so I don't have to have my good ones out. But these are going to be 866s or 3B28s. Here's a filament transformer for it. This is a 1200 volt transformer. And this is a 2000 volt transformer. This one is much, much heavier. I think I'm going to have to use this one, but here's 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 the thought. Here's what I'm going to do. These are the two mercury vapor rectifiers, or the yeah, 866, or the xenon rectifiers, which is a 3B28. And then I'm going to put in uh, two solid state rectifiers that'll just be under the chassis. And if I switch between, if I put a switch so that I can ground this point, then I'll have a bridge, and I'll get full voltage here plus about 30 percent so I'd get like 25 2600 volts or if I flip the switch over here I'll be grounding the center tap and I won't even be using these two I'll just be using the vacuum tube rectifiers and I'll get half the voltage so I figure I'm going to get something where around 1250 volts in the low end and 2500 the high end I also thought I'd put a holding relay circuit in it this will be a 120 volt AC coil. This is one of the contacts of the coil. And if you put a uh, momentary push button switch across it and you close this contact, then of course the, the relay will pick up. And then this is the uh, shutoff switch and this is a normally closed one. You can actually put lots of different things in here. The thermistor I drew in the wrong place. I'm gonna put it over here because I'm going to have to take off of here and here to run you know, other stuff. This is not a complete power supply, but it's just some thoughts. Uh, and I'm going to use this holding relay circuit because I, I use this right now in my shop to protect my equipment. I, I've showed this before on uh, YouTube videos. This thermostat right here is actually into a holding relay circuit. So if it gets too hot in here, it, it, sh it shuts off all of my equipment. So it's all of this off right here so it doesn't burn up. I learned that the hard way years ago when my wife came in and turned my little air conditioner off and uh, burned up one of my oscilloscopes because it got so darn hot in here. I live in El Paso. It's 100 degrees every day. But uh, here, of course, I can keep it nice and cool at 68. Anyhow, that is the beginning. I've got a long way to go. This probably is not the last layout I gotta make sure that these are uh, very well protected because touching this right here can certainly kill you well actually this is the plate over here you can see it is this is the grid two filament pins are down here uh, power supply here's the cap capacitors I'll use it there's a lot more to go but um, I, I got I gotta start somewhere and like I say, this is a 1200 volt transformer. I want to use it. 
but I don't think it's going to give me enough voltage to make me happy. This one actually runs up at about uh, 2300 volts and I'll load. I'll show you. These old meters are great. I can measure up to 6,000 volts on it. 6,000 here. See, this is 6,000 VAC. I'll plug this thing in very, very carefully. Not paying attention to the camera, but to me and staying alive. There we go. So you can see it's at about 2,300 volts. No load. It's rated at 2,000. 700 milliamps. Yeah, this thing built like a tank. Um, the last time I did one of these projects and I asked for help, I got a lot of help. I got a lot of good suggestions from you guys. Um, I'm looking for schematics. I'm looking for ideas. You know, really helpful ideas about um, what to use as a driver. It's from here, to there, as a voltage amplifier. Like I say, 6DJ8, KT88 is popular. Um, that's not really what I want to use, but that may that I may have to go there for some common sense. The, the only power supply that's going to be on here, I think I'm going to build a bias supply onto this chassis, but I may not. Certainly the filament. Uh, i got to build some some other uh, power supplies over here, so there you go. Let me take you up in the attic and I'll show you some of the tubes I have and uh, what I've been thinking about. Okay, let's see if I can take you up in the attic without killing myself and carrying a camera. I'll show you some of the projects that I have spoken of. Actually, I was one of the things I was going to build with that transformer, and I still may, is a pair of push pull 810s. If you like these beauties, I have uh, five of them. Of course, I'm not going to be using these in this project, but what I would like to drive that 833 with is one of these little guys. This is a VT25A. I don't remember its other number, but that's easy enough to find out. I have three of those down in there. I have uh, lots of KT88s. KT88s are probably one of the tubes I have the most of. Got some 813s, got a bunch of these guys. These are beauties, aren't they? Anyway, I don't know why I'm diverging from all this. Um, but I am, op I am open for some thoughts. Here's all of my uh, rectifiers, I do have them. Got a bunch of 866s, 3B28s. Here's some pretty little triodes. These are called uh, 75TH. Yeah, I have three of those. These these other two over here. Got a lot of got a lot of triodes. But I'm not gonna build anything out of those yet. These things run 3,000 volts on the plate, so they're no wimp. Um I think I've shown this one before. This is a I'm gonna build an RF amplifier out of this guy right here. This is a 31000 z I love this thing. Isn't that a beauty? And I just, oh, a month or so ago, got in the filament transformer for it right here. So those are the unique things you actually have to collect before you start building. This is a seven and a half volt, 21 amp. That's what it takes to light that guy up. I'm gonna use these kind of rectifiers and a heat sink um, for the filament of the 833. You gotta run DC on it or it'll hum really bad. So anyway, that's the beginning, and um, again, like I say, any, any thoughts you might have, some RF stuff for the, for the radio guys that like this kind of stuff. I never, I never have, I used one of these many years ago, but I never have used these. I've always wanted to use this one. I think this one right here is, to, I think, is the correct one for that 31000Z. Anyway, if you like to build stuff, I certainly do. Give me your thoughts on on an 833 single-ended triode amp. Appreciate it.